So here's our lesson on the unit ratio technique. And the first examples we're going to do are going to be for length examples. So our example here is that we're going to be converting 395 miles and we want to convert it to kilometers. So let's go through our technique. So we're going to start with the given measurements and the units. So we need to start with the 395 miles. So there they are. Now we want to switch that to kilometers. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find an equivalence either from our tables or the internet or wherever. But for our courses, it's predominantly going to be from the tables that will convert our given units into our desired units. So we're going to look for a conversion factor or an equivalence for miles to kilometers. And if we look this up from our tables, we can see that one mile is equivalent to 1.609 kilometers. We'll now have to multiply our original given value in units by the ratio such that the desired units are left in the numerator. So this is where our unit ratio comes into play because remember we can write this equivalence as two ratios, either one mile over 1.609 kilometers or 1.609 kilometers and one mile in the bottom. So you can see how we have to have the kilometers in the top and the miles in the bottom so that the miles will cancel, cancel out. We're going to see how these units cancel out, so the miles will cancel and we'll let, we are left with just the kilometers as we want. We're going to gather our numbers and perform the calculation. So our numbers are the 395 times the 1609 divided by 1, and you can see how we just have kilometers. So our final answer is 635.6 kilometers. And with our answers, you know, for, say from a test or assignment perspective, we'll be given the guidelines as to how many decimal places or how many significant digits to use. Let's try another example. Let's convert feet to miles. Same process. Start with the given measurement in units. So there's our 356.0 feet. Next part of the process, find an equivalence to convert our given units to our desired units. And again, when we look up our tables of equivalences, we see an equivalence between miles and feet. And now we have to decide whether the feet are going to be on the top or on the bottom. Since they are part of our original units, we're going to have to put them on the bottom so that the, count, the feet will cancel out. So here's our unit ratio, one mile equivalent to 5,280 feet. Again, we'll see how the units cancel out. Feet are in the top, feet are in the bottom they cancel out and we're left with just miles. We'll gather our numbers again and perform the calculation. So there's our 356.0 times 1 divided by the 5280 and we can see how we only have miles left. So our final answer to four decimal places is 0 0.0674 miles. Next example Let's convert 25.6 kilometers to megameters. Now we were in the imperial system before and now we're in the metric system. Same process applies though. We're going to start with the given measurement in units. So 25.6 and km is kilometers. We'll look for an equivalence from our tables to change the given units to our desired units. And this is where we're going to look up our metrics prefix table. We might just know it off the top of our heads. But again, you know, depending on what your source is, you could, you may have to look this up or you just may know it. So we can see that one megameter is a thousand kilometers. Now this is where sometimes people struggle. Like how do you get that from the metrics prefix tables? Because it doesn't actually give you an equivalence between these two. You have to read it. So I've given an abbreviated matrix prefix below here, and you can see how here's our base units meters. Here's the small ones. Here's going into the large. And notice how I have blanks. And when we discussed this in our intro video for the um, basic unit conversions, we said that the matrix prefix table did sort of jump the powers of 10. So I wanted to show you that, you know, here this would be the 10 to the 4th and 10 to the 5. So if I want to go from kilometers to megameters, well, what I can do is there's one jump, two jump, three jumps. So that's 10 times 10 times 10, which is a thousand or 10 cubed. And that's where we got the thousand kilometers is one megameter. Now there's a couple of different ways to read the metrics prefix table. You know, you may have been exposed to another one. My preference is to say that there's many little things and one big thing. So I tend to always jump going from the right to the left whenever possible. 
Now we can decide. Now we see how that came, where this equivalence came from. We can decide which one goes in the top and which in the bottom. I want to get rid of kilometers, so kilometers is going to have to go in the bottom. So when I multiply by my unit ratio, we can see we have the megameters in the numerator and kilometers in the bottom. And then we proceed as normal. We see how the units cancel out, so our kilometers are gone. Same process, process as before. We gather our numbers and perform the calculation. So 25.6 times 1, all divided by 1,000, and then there's our megameters. And finally, we get 635.6 megameters. So the process for unit ratio technique, you know, is independent of the type of units we have. It's very standard, and we can use this um, for anything we want to do. One more length example, we're going to convert millimeters to inches. Now again, we are in metric here, and we're going to go to imperial. Same process, start with a given measurement in units, 155 millimeters. Look for an equivalence to convert our given units to the desired units. Now previously, we've only had to look up one equivalence. This is one where, you know, we're going to need two equivalences. And they're from our metric prefix table, but also from the table of equivalences. So we know that there's 10 millimeters is 1 centimeters, centimeter, excuse me. And why am I interested in centimeters? Well, because on my table of equivalences, or maybe just from general knowledge, I know that 1 inch is defined as 2.54 centimeters. So I can go from millimeters to centimeters, and then from centimeters to inches. Again, taking a look at where this came from, the 10 millimeters, 1 centimeter. Here's our, my abbreviated metric uh, prefix table here. And we can see one jump between millimeters and centimeters. So there's 10 millimeter, 10 of the small things, in the one of the slightly bigger things, centimeters. Now we're going to multiply by our unit ratios until our desired units are left in the numerator. And recognize, since we have two equivalences here, we're going to have two unit ratios. So I'm going to use the one with millimeters first to get rid of the millimeters. So I'll need my first one. So I'll multiply by 1 centimeter over 10 millimeters. Then to get rid of the centimeters, I'll multiply by my second equivalence. And again, since centimeters are in the numerator, centimeters will be in the denominator. So I have 1 inch to 2.54 centimeters. We'll take a look and see how the units cancel out. So my millimeters are canceling, canceling out top and bottom. And then my centimeters are canceling out top and bottom. And I'm left with just inches. And once again, we can gather our numbers and perform our final calculation. So from the numerator, I've got 155 times 1 times 1. So there's the ones there. You know, you might not actually even write the ones in your calculations, but I'm just doing it here for complete, completeness sake. And then the denominator, I have 10 and times 2.54. So there's all my numbers, there's my units, and my final answer, 6.10 inches.